Good morning. It is May 12th. It is Tuesday. We're losing track of the days over here. Yes, like we are. It is. Is it 2021 yet? It huh. feels like we've been going that. So we are on episode 40 of At Home with Mrs. Zickery. Let me tell you, Mrs. Zickery and I, we're having a hard time <laughs> coming up with ideas for these videos. Only we were doing, for today. We were doing so well early on. We had this spreadsheet going. We still have the, the spreadsheet. Ideas, mm -hmm. And it was like every single row uh -huh. was filled. Yes. Now we're like to the bottom. <laughs> we're lucky enough to have one letter in the row. Uh -huh. It is becoming very challenging to come up with original ideas. So if you have any, just email us and we will likely use them because we are all out. We are not all out. I have it all planned. Do you? It just was a little slim pickings today, for today, today, so today, drag today, it out. Today's video is probably going to be 30 seconds, yep. which is why this is the grace behind the camera. So today we are doing a day of teeth and tooth fairy yes. and all of those fun things. Dylan, you, can... you didn't notice my tutu. It's tutu Tuesday. Oh, it is two, It is tutu Tuesday. You should have put the tutu on. I did not want to wear the tutu today, but we are celebrating teeth and tooth fairies today. I don't know if it's a national holiday. We're just, we're just I picked it for today. It. So obviously Jackson and myself, we have lost all of our baby teeth. So we have our wonderful adult teeth, but for all of you, you are probably still losing your teeth. So we have, we dug out of our memory boxes, these cute little bears. These were made for Jackson and I from our aunt. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of said bears was that when we would lose a tooth, we would put the little tooth in the pocket and then put it under our pillow and then over night, the tooth fairy would come and give us money. Jackson and I growing up were more concerned about the money. <laughs> so, what we would do is we would we would have our you know our teeth would fall out and we would take it out to the kitchen and just plate. leave it on the island mm -hmm. with and just like just leave the money on the island just have a good day. And you didn't appreciate the thought of the tooth fairy coming in disturbing your rest. No, it was I I, I really needed my sleep. Yes. I still do. So yes. if the tooth fairy can just come leave money on the island and leave and leave mean, the tooth for leave, that matter. Leave the tooth. And we did used to when we were growing up. We used to have our teeth like saved in a little like tooth shaped case, but that has gone missing, unfortunately. I think so. when we moved here, that might have gotten thrown out. Such a, such a, sad such a loss. loss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's these. And then this is Zigre today. Uh, did a Are you craft. going towards my I, creepy? It's not a craft, it's a snack, Dylan. Snack, sorry, it's a tooth themed yes. snack. This is something, huh? <clears throat> They're a little creepy, not gonna lie. This is this one especially. Wow. Thank you. That well that one's just... facing the camera. Okay. So friends at home, you need apples, peanut butter, and then mini marshmallows to make your teeth. And then that's a fun little yummy snack. I don't think I've had an apple in probably 15 years. Oh, well, that's great, Dylan. You could have an apple and peanut butter and marshmallows I, today. I don't like any of those. So, okay. Well, yeah. So not much happened in today's <laughs> video. So stay tuned for so the book. Stay, stay tuned for the book. All right. Welcome back. You'll remember we are reading Invisible Stanley, the end of chapter one. They had him hold on to a red balloon so they could keep track of him. Chapter two, Dr. Dan. What's that red balloon doing here? Asked Dr. Dan. Well, never mind. Good morning, Mr. and Mrs. Lambchop. Something about Stanley, my nurse says. He's not been taken flat again. No, no, said Mrs. Lambchop. Stanley has remained around. They mostly do, said Dr. Dan. Well, let's have the little fellow in. I am in, said Stanley, holding directly before him. He was holding the balloon. Ha ha, Mr. Lambchop, said Dr. Dan. You are an excellent ventriloquist, but I see through your little joke. What you see through, said Mr. Lambchop, is Stanley. All right, there's Dr. Dan. Beg pardon, said Dr. Dan. Stanley became invisible during the night, Mrs. Lambchop explained. We are quite unsettled by it. Headache, Dr. Dan asked Stanley's balloon. Throat sore, stomach upset. I feel fine, Stanley said. I see, hmm. Dr. Dan shook his head. Frankly, despite my long years of practice, I've not run into this before. But one of my excellent medical books, Difficult and Pe Peculiar Cases by Dr. Franz Gemeister, may help. He took a large book from the shelf behind him and looked into it. Ah, 
Disappearances, page 134. He found the page. Hmm, not much here, I'm afraid. France, 1851. A Madame Palenque vanished while eating bananas in the rain. Spain, 1923. The Gonzales twins, age 11, became invisible after eating fruit salad. Lightning had been observed. The most recent case in 1868 is Umbuk, or 1968 is Umbuk, an Eskimo chief, last seen eating canned peaches during a blizzard. Dr. Dan returned the book to the shelf. Here's Dr. Dan in his book. That's it, he said. Gemeister suspects a connection between bad weather and fruit. It stormed last night, said Stanley, and I ate an apple, raisins too. There you are, said Dr. Dan. But we must look at the bright side, Mr. and Mrs. Lambchop. Stanley seems perfectly healthy, except for the visibility factor. We'll just keep an eye on him. Easier said than done, said Mr. Lambchop. Why do his clothes also disappear? Not my field, I'm afraid, said Dr. Dan. I suggest a textile specialist. We've kept you long enough, Dr. Mrs. Lambchop said. Come, George. Stanley, where are you, Stanley? Ugh, just hold the balloon a bit higher, dear. Goodbye, Dr. Dan. By dinner time, Mr. and Mrs. Lambchop and Arthur had become quite sad. The red balloon, though useful in locating Stanley, kept reminding them of how much they missed his dear face and smile. But after dinner, Mrs. Lambchop, who was artistically talented, replaced the red balloon with a pretty white one and got out her watercolor paints. Using four colors and several delicate brushes, she painted an excellent likeness of Stanley smiling on the white balloon. All right, here's a picture of Stanley on his balloon. Everyone became at once more cheerful. Stanley said he felt almost his old self again, especially when he looked in the mirror. And Roxy has joined us for the end of the book. Hi, Roxy. All right, that's the end of chapter two. See you tomorrow.